Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we dealt with all of the Fixmas stuff. Where we finished off the tech tree, finished up our Fixmas factory, and now we're making fireworks and snowballs out the wazoo. But now that it's 2022, we're getting back to our main projects though. Specifically, our rubber refining plant. Where we set up something like 140 fully overclocked refineries so that we can turn a little bit of oil into like 9,000 plastic. And oh boy, is this system complicated. But luckily, last time we got all of the machines set and all of the fluids dealt with, so today we can do all the belt work and get this place running. And if you're excited for that, remember to leave a like. Now I know you're thinking all of this looks absolutely insane and that's because it is. We're in late game satisfactory now and we have infinite power so we're doing some crazy stuff. So. We have all of the alternate recipes in the game, which allows us to do some pretty awesome things. And what we're doing here is we're turning one crude oil into three rubber using a very complicated alternate recipe chain. But first, we take the crude oil and we turn it into heavy oil residue and polymer resin. The residue goes into a blender and will make fuel. Then the resin will go into a refinery and make some rubber. And the rubber from this refinery, made out of the polymer resin, will go and make plastic when combined with fuel. And then finally, the plastic gets combined with other fuel and makes rubber. And after running all these numbers through a spreadsheet, effectively we can make one crude oil into three rubber. And vice versa for plastic as well, if we wanted to. Whereas the default recipe, it's just crude oil or 30 per minute and you get 20 plastic. So three crude to two plastic or two rubber, that's not even a one to one ratio. And we're going a one crude oil to three plastic or rubber ratio. So it's very worthwhile to do this. If you have a ton of time on your hands and are slightly crazy. But yeah, that's the whole nine yards. Again, we have all the fluids dealt with. All of them are piped up, going to where they need to be. We have a little hyper tube hub and a to-do list where we got a lot done. <sighs> but that's only half the battle because now it's the belt work. And the big goal today is to finish all that up and actually get this factory running. And we'll see what else we can do as well. So let's go start at the beginning of the system, actually using the oil and making the heavy oil residue in polymer resin. So polymer resin, gotta scoop you up. Let's go and add in all of the mergers. By the way, if you're curious about all the numbers and stuff, I have a spreadsheet, it's available on Patreon, if you want to go and support me there. And that way you can actually download it and mess around with the numbers yourself. But if you just want to know exactly what I'm doing here, here are all the numbers for the build I'm working on. So now we kind of just have to bring things where they need to be and low balance items into the rest of the machines. And first up here we have 1,700 polymer resin per minute, so that's like three belts-ish. And it's kind of an issue of how we're going to bring them up and move them around. And this wall over here is already a little wacky. But if we just go through this wall, yeah, we have a whole face of the base that's ready to rock and roll. So we'll just have these everywhere. And I think the resin will go up. And we ended up going actually all the way up. Up and over and beyond. Because all of the resin is going to make residual rubber here. And it needed a little bit of water too, so I brought up a water pipe from the ground, obviously, all the way here. But things got a little weird with the resin, because we have three rows of refineries. Each row has about eight machines, and go figure, 1,700 divided by three, not exactly the most pleasant number in the world. But because of convenient logic of how I built this base, load balancing wasn't too bad. So we have one floor or we have three rows of refineries making all the polymer resin. And then we kind of have this extra set of machines on another floor making another set of polymer resin. So down here, we have three equal lines of resin being made. Awesome, that's perfect. And then we just have one weird line. So what I'm doing is I have the one weird line going up here and then going into a splitter being split into three and combining with the other even lines. And that's that. It's all perfectly balanced. Off it goes, down over this way, across to the other side of the base, and into all of the refineries. So, kinda got lucky there, because I have no idea how I'd get 0.67 items per minute on a belt. Don't think that would've worked out too well. But with all that piped and belted together, now where do we want to take the rubber? 
Well, to get this whole system started, we need to take some initial rubber and turn that into plastic. And our plastic refining will be on one of the lower floors. So this is the main recycled rubber, and we're gonna have the recycled plastic here because we needed the fuel. And in the last episode, we figured out the whole fuel situation, and we have all the fuel from the blenders going up this wall and entering these machines properly. So all we gotta do is come on down. And we're actually gonna get pretty lucky here because we have three rows of machines upstairs, and then we have three rows of machines to make the plastic. So the numbers are complicated, but we just plug one set of machines into the next and it's gonna work out. So that's like extremely convenient because, oh man, the reason I was so scared of the belt work for this is because there's some funky numbers on my spreadsheet and it was really looking like things were gonna get pretty crazy. But these first two steps were kind of the hardest ones. So we should quote unquote be in the clear. And oh wow, do I instantly regret saying that. Of course we're not gonna be in the clear. This is a very complicated setup. But we're kind of at the last part because once we have this plastic hooked up to our belt, we just need to bring it to the floor below. In this area, where we have 61 refineries. Ooh, also, how, how will we set this up? Each machine is overclocked, so 30 times 2.5 is 75. 75 times 61 is 4,500-ish plastic. Okay. And how big are these rows? Well, there are three rows, 61. Yeah, we have the extra one is over there. And these other rows have to have 20 machines per row. So 20 times 75 is 1,500. Wait a second then. With the plastic, can we actually put all of these machines in one row? Is this gonna work out? 60 times 2.5, that's 150. And we have eight machines per row, 150 times eight. Okay. So the belting's gonna be a little weird. Oh boy, never let me in the future say, oh, things are gonna be fine from here, cause that's exactly when things become not fine. Yep, lots of items, lots of stuff that has to move, lots of stuff that has to groove. You'd think it'd be simple, you would be incorrect. Because I actually had to add in a bunch more refineries all the way randomly over this way and have these like, what is this, six machines running, making plastic and just to make the numbers work and it's just, stuff's going everywhere, man. It's going everywhere. It's going up, it's going down, it's moving all around. The craziness of these walls, it's happening real time. But I think I may have actually hooked up things properly. It's hard dealing with decimal points sometimes, but you know, you have a little bit of logic and should be okay. So after dealing with some straight up nonsense, all the plastic is coming down here. It's balanced out relatively well, and I have everything moving and everything grooving. It was tedious. It took forever. But it should all technically by the books work. And also we kind of got lucky too, because after belting and piping and all the nonsense, you know, things got crazy, but not too crazy. And everything is actually hooked up. All the belts that we need are in, everything is balanced, everything is secured, and all of the items are gonna be going to some awesome sinks because we are about to run our first test. And oh man, I wonder what the odds of all this working first try are. 20%? Maybe. 2%? A little bit more realistic, yeah. But to get everything started, all we gotta do is hook up these last couple pipes to the actual oil nodes themselves, and it all begins. It's gonna take a while for the system to start because we have to like recycle some plastics to actually make any rubber at first, so it'll take a minute. Well, that's okay. It'll give us that time to actually monitor what's going on. And before we do anything, standard please. Bop, boom. That's not the right color. Pipes. Okay, that's that's it. That's moving things along. Everything's powered. The power system is still running. The nuclear plant is fine. Now we rock and roll. <laughs> Has all this time been worth it? Is everything going to collapse? Shall I finally lose my last marble? We will find out quite soon. Running through things, all the crude oil enters the system here. 
and then it's gonna go to that back well I was showing off earlier and go up to the heavy oil refineries up to that floor and then all of it's going to come down back to the blenders because you know that was the most <laughs> intelligent system I could have made of course and once it comes back down to the blenders we're actually gonna be making some fuel because this diluted fuel recipe is the cat's pajamas and it combines the residue with water to make fuel effectively turning water into oil that's very good but uh where's uh, the residue buddy pal is it a pumping problem something not connected is there just no material here yet yeah no material yet oh, but we're going we got some of them rock and rolling okay okay this pipe looks pretty good that means these pipes should be going. Nvidia waking up. Ring ring hello. Please actually be powered. I powered everything, right? Yeah, that's fine. What's going on here? Nothing. <laughs> Where's the oil going? Aha! Into here. It's alive. It's alive! And the polymer resin's gonna go out that way to make the residual rubber. That means this pipe's gonna fill up. Ah, yeah, bud! Yeah, dude, this is my favorite part. When the 20 to 30 hour project actually turns on for the first time, <laughs> there's this brief glimmer of hope where, hey, maybe everything just works out perfectly until those hopes are dashed and everything doesn't work out. But for now, I'm living in the dream, baby! Back down here. Let's see what's going on. <gasps> yes! Yes! We're spinning! We're winning! Give me that fuel. That'll all go this way, into this pipe, all the way over to here, through this other floor, and then up this wall to the later stages of production. But what's the story with my perfect blue here? It's going just fine. Yeah, it's just combining with water, so it's no biggie. Just wanna make sure they're running right now and I can measure rates in a bit. So now we're going downstairs. Yes. To the recycled plastic. And from there to where? This way. Over to here. And finally, to this last stage, we're making all of the recycled rubber. Good. 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 Yeah, the fuel is really just the big hold up here. But once it gets going, it's gonna get going. And we're actually making some rubber, baby. Which is actually going to keep the system running right now. That's just how it be. You gotta spend rubber to make rubber sometimes, brother. Ah, but at the end of the line, we are making our first bits of profit. So we have, what is this? One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> we have like 11 lines. 11 780 lines of rubber that will be coming down this way. Oh, I should check my points right now. What are the points at? <laughs> Everywhere. Okay, we're not gonna be able to measure anything without that. That's a, uh, I don't know what's going on. We'll just wait here a moment and see if this starts working a little bit better. Actually, I realize that's gonna take a lot more than a second. So we'll get back to that to see if the rates are working out. We know this system is actually running. So, you know, we can check mark this. Boom. Where'd the check mark for this go? Give me it back. Good. Okay. Belt work. It's done. Let's make that a smiley face too. You know what? We're doing it. No, we're gonna have to do testing and bug fixing in a bit. Okay. Well, what should we work on next? Storage and train connection? That's pretty important. Uh, final decals. Interior, exterior, walkability. Hmm. Yeah, the inside of here kind of looks like the big pooper. Now, I'd like to decorate a little bit. I suppose the most important thing here is really the decals for the exterior need to be dealt with first. Because moving forward, this factory is actually only halfway done. Like, the refineries are running, and I'll tweak them to make them work, I'm sure. But we also have all of the other resources around here. Like iron, caterium, some coal, and all that jazz. So TLDR. We're going to be adding in a huge new section to this base right over there. And you know what I always find really interesting? 
people see my builds and say, Kibbs, how do you build so well? How did you do this? Burr, burr, burr. First off, thank you for all the compliments. <laughs> but secondly, to answer your question, dude, I don't know, man. I just try something out, and if it doesn't work out, I get rid of it. That's it, trial and error, baby. Like, the rest of this phase was a big trial and error thing, and I was kind of inspired by, like, a bike frame for how to build it. So I don't really know how we add to a bike frame. Maybe the handlebars, but I feel like that wouldn't translate to a building so well. So we're just gonna add in this diagonal slope. Similarly to how we have that other big slope going up that way, we'll have another slope going down this way. Okay, and version one is looking kind of... Yeah, something? We have like a box, I have like this diagonal thing going that way, but uh, it wasn't really working out. But I was fiddling around with this box idea, and I think this could work. Like we'll have a box and this top roof that goes straight back that way. And that will kind of find that side of the factory. It's just the white wall and whatever's going down here, that gotta be tweaked a lot more. And change it did! So instead of having that slope going up from that direction, I have it going from the inside direction there. And it's a concrete pillar similar to this. So like this goes up and over that way. Same deal over here, boom, up. And it's like symmetry or something like that, man. Like it's radical, brother. And then in the middle, it, it's not perfect yet, but I got some ideas going. Kept the white wall and I opened up the space to show some of the rubber storage that we're gonna have in here. And then there are some random fluid tanks. Oh, and also we had this happy accident where we have the fluid buffer cutting through the floor up here. But then I was able to put a big pillar support there and some big frames up top. And it all looks like it's one thing, turning a problem into a solution. Ah, oh, and the fine the little details to bring it all together. That inspired me, that little pillar accident. So we got some extra slopes in there, beams hidden all throughout. A little extra concrete, and that is beautiful. Love it. The front of our factory is pretty much done. Except for, you know, like the chaos down here. But we'll deal with that later. Because I gotta show you the thing. The factory in full swing. And in an absolutely shocking twist, nobody saw coming. Everything actually works perfectly. All the fluids are moving as they should. The recycling process was all measured out right. And after double checking my numbers, we are making over 7,500 rubber per minute. So let's go back to the to-do board. And what can we check off? Testing and bug fixing. It's done. It worked first try. Also, we have the exterior done now as well. But there's still a couple things left unchecked and it'll take a little bit of time. A little bit of time some other day because that's all for now. So I hope you all enjoyed and thank you for watching but have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye-bye.